know, in March of 2020, uh, the way that the Big Fresno Fair does business changed forever. Everything was shut down and our employees all went home and things were very grim as they were, you know, across the nation. At first I kind of was like, okay, this is a joke. We're gonna have an extra week of spring break. Like, okay, then we're gonna be back. And then as I kept going, I was like, oh my gosh, we're not gonna be able to go back to school. And so, yeah, it was really devastating. And all of the shows that had gotten canceled and everything, it was, it really hit hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's perfect. Uh, it's really hard for our students to stay engaged. You know, if you take a student who signed up for ROP welding and expected to be building the really cool things that they do in that class, like trailers and barbecues and whatever they dream up. And then now they're online for two hours a day with their teacher doing notes and like watching YouTube videos. It's, it's really hard to keep them engaged in something like that. <laughs> and that's one of the hardest things about distance learning is we have students who have been really successful in the past and are sinking right now. I'm gonna be honest, at the beginning, I was not motivated at all. It's, it was just so hard to look at the positive side of the situation. It's challenging for them to wanna sit there for 90 minutes and kind of be lectured to or shown a video when in reality they wanna be doing. Like they joined agriculture to get their hands dirty, to learn the skills that they need to be successful in a job. And it's, it's really hard to teach that over a computer screen. When I found out that we're going to do the fair virtually, I thought it'd be a little rough because trying to keep your pig in that camera, try not to go too far, it's just going to, it would probably be like a little rough. Nobody will ever understand until you actually do it what our youth go through when they decide to exhibit livestock. FFA motto is learning to do, doing to learn, and we're doing that component of learning to do, but we're missing that component of doing to learn, which, is, which has always been the most successful part of agricultural education. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years by Gar Bennett, the growing experts in water, irrigation, nutrition, and crop care advice and products. We help growers feed the world. By Golden State Farm Credit, building relationships with rural America by providing ag financial services. By Brandt, professional agriculture, proudly supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003. By Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food. So for me, showing cattle is a way that I can earn money towards my college degree. And so it, as much as I love to show and I learned as many great lessons, it's really going to help me to be able to further my career in agriculture. Maybe he's just a lot, he's, <laughs> maybe he's not awake yet this morning. Ugh, I'm not awake either. <laughs> so when we first started buying cattle, like last August, um, obviously COVID wasn't a thing, we had no idea. So we spent all this money on good steers and planned to take them to State Fair and Fresno Fair and all these shows. And so once you have raised them for six, eight months and you're ready to go and then the shows get canceled, it, it really messes with your plans. I will forever win tug of war. <laughs> now, what's this guy's name? This is Rip. Rip? Yeah. Like after the character in Yellowstone? Heck yeah. Right when we got out of school um, and things started to get canceled, like farther in advance, not just you know the next week, whatever. I kind of started to realize, you know, my junior year is going to be way different than it has been for everybody else. And um, I realized, you know, you only have four years to show in FFA five years if you show as a graduate, but I realized I think one of those years was gonna get taken from me and it was, it was really sad. Honestly, in our minds, we thought, okay, this'll be a month, two months. We're not gonna be a fair that's gonna be affected by this. We're in October. I mean, there's just no way that this is gonna keep going until October. And we really had 
that very strong feeling uh, for many months. And we, you know, when people would ask, we would say, yeah, with Big Fresno Fair is happening. We will be here. This is what we do. And uh, it wasn't really until probably uh, June where we kind of started seeing a little bit more of the writing on the wall and um, really had to start kind of looking at what that meant. So FFA is one of the three rings that encompass agriculture education. It focuses on leadership development, personal growth, and getting kids ready for a career. So on March 13th of last year, we got an email from our school district that said we would no longer be teaching in person due to COVID. And we had maybe like a week of nothing where I think they just kind of made it our spring break, if I remember correctly. And then we came back to school and we had to create three weeks worth of packets for our students. And they came and picked it up. And that three weeks is when the district kind of figured out what was gonna happen with our students. Then we got a schedule and we started distance learning in April. Agricultural education consists of three components, FFA, supervised agricultural experience and classroom laboratory. Those, we call the, that the three circle model and those three components are the reason agricultural education is so successful. When COVID happened, you are now eliminating parts of that component, part, uh, part of those three circles. Our students have also missed out on the hands-on experience at the farm. We have a 20 acre farm here. We have animals that students participate in with COVID. That's just simply not an option. We were able to maintain some of our student experiences until the end of Chow Chill Affair. And then from that point, basically the student involvement on the farm has been non-existent. Our department is a very hands-on, learn-by-doing kind of department. Uh, our kids are constantly doing labs, working with their hands, building things, welding. And to take your curriculum that is completely hands-on and try to develop lessons that are online using a computer, videos, uh, finding websites, it's actually been really difficult for us. What kind of animals do you show? I show like, Hogs are like how other people know them, like pigs. My name is Nash Fisher, and I am a sixth grader at Red Bank Elementary. Well, when the, the point that I figured out that it was no fair, my family started talking about it. We were like, there's probably going to be no fair this year because like COVID's going on. So our 4-H and our FFA programs are, um, they are so robust and there are so many, you know, little fingers that come off of those programs. And there is honestly something for every child who has an interest in anything. For those youth who are really excited and want to have something to do with production agriculture and um, you know livestock and those kind of things, showing these animals, um, it, it's a huge sense of responsibility. It didn't really change much because we were gonna go probably raise our pigs the same way we do. My dad was gonna call a few people that he knew and sell my pig. It's a tireless job that these kids have. And you can tell, there are kids who do it really well, and there are kids who um, you know, don't put as much effort into it. And those kids who do really well are the ones who they thrive, and this is their mojo. This is what they, you know, this is their baseball, or this is their softball. Um, you know, this, this is a competitive sport. When I found out the we're gonna do the fair virtually, I thought it'd be a little rough, because trying to keep your pig in that camera, trying not to go too far, it's just gonna, it would probably be like a little rough for some pigs that are like, they, like like to run, like you'd have to try to keep them calm down and like keep them in the right spot. Are you nervous right now getting ready to show? Yeah, jump? pretty nervous, like, cause you don't know how your pig's gonna act with a ton of different other pigs. What are you hoping to get for this pig? Um, probably around maybe third.
Leslie Madriz is a current student of mine, and I have had her almost her entire high school career. When we first got the news of COVID-19, it was probably the month of March. Our teachers had told us that we were probably gonna have a week off and returning from that week, we were probably gonna get packets because they thought that we were gonna get sent home for a virtual setting. I think it's very difficult, the setting. I get distracted so easily. Learning isn't as easy as it used to be. And due to the fact that I'm a visual learner, school has been the most difficult I have ever felt it before. They say your junior year is the hardest, but personally, this virtual setting has hit my senior year really hard. So Madeira is also a little bit different. We have a really large urban population in our program, and so most of our students actually raise their market animals for the fair on our school farm. Once school got put on distance learning, they didn't want the students coming out, and the fair canceled. So we had to figure out a way to get these animals sold so our students didn't lose all of their money. Luckily, our community is super supportive and a lot of them privately purchased animals um, and the advisors got them butchered and like processed. And our farm bureau, which is actually across the street, they put on a sale for us. But with the school closures and going to distance learning, that meant that for the next fair, we, we as a department made a decision to not sponsor our kids going on the school farm. So if they wanted to raise an animal at home and try to go to the next fair, they would have to do it on their own. The fair actually ended up canceling before our kids bought animals. Well, most of our kids bought animals. And so luckily, like we didn't have to deal with that kind of a situation. But I know of a lot of schools that had to do virtual shows and virtual sales in order to help their kids sell their animals. So it's just take a few minutes to comb them since they shed a lot. Well, I, I would always do it at our school, our campus. We have a school rabbit farm and barn, so that's where I would comb him every day after school. But because of COVID, I had to bring him home, and now I'm doing it in my backyard. Like five months now. It's been five months since I brought him home. Another thing that I do is I clip their nails. And one thing at school, we would always have like, the kids that were in the rabbit barn would always be there to help me clip their nails, but because I'm at home and my siblings are always busy or my mom's always doing some other tax task, I'd have to learn how to clip his nails on my own. It's a difficult situation to see students struggling. And I, I've reached out to students. One, one student in particular is a senior. And, you know, this is his go-to year to finish strong. And it's difficult because these students bring so much to the class, especially the student in particular. And to not have him in class is, is a challenge. And to see students struggling is a challenge. And it is hard to gauge how we can help them when we don't have any contact with them except via email or phone call or video. This is what's called a double blower. So it's like a giant hair dryer basically. And we use it to dry their hair obviously, but also to blow out all of the debris and dust and everything that gets in them overnight. All right, let's 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 go to the beauty salon. All right. <laughs> show cattle from anywhere from 1500 bucks 1200 bucks all the way up to people spend crazy amounts 30,000 I mean you can some of the really big national show winners they'll they'll buy steers for over a hundred thousand dollars is this an everyday thing or is this just what you do before you're gonna show it um, this is an everyday thing so we don't soak them every day because it dries out their hide a lot and so but we wash them rinse them every day sometimes twice a day in the summer when it's really hot if you spend $100,000 on a steer, their hair is perfect. Their left ear is perfect. There's, you know, everything's gonna be right on. The people who spend $100,000 on their steers, they're not looking to uh, make money. They're, it's gonna be really hard to do that. They're looking to win. They wanna go win a national show or win a really big show at least. When you're showing a steer, what are you, what are you, there's a visual aspect of it mm -hmm. and there's also the weight and the structure of the animal too, right? Uh -huh. Yes. So, like I said before, it's like a beauty pageant. So you want one that has a lot of hair because then, you know, they look bigger and they basically just look fluffier. 
and um, the hair helps you can when you clip them, which is when you give them a haircut. Um, the hair helps to hide any kind of imperfections that they have. You can kind of clip it out of them. And so even if you don't have a really perfect sear, if he has a lot of hair, you can kind of hide some things that aren't as desirable. <laughs> So there are ways that you can hold cattle that's not bad for them at all. It doesn't hurt them. You just feed them different. They get different kind of food, different type of stuff in their food. That way they don't just keep growing and growing and growing. Well, this is where the magic happens. So this supplement here, um, it helps them grow hair. It has kelp in it and kind of just things that help them get a little natural boost. And this supplement, it's called Fresh and Feminine. It smells, um, I don't really know how to explain how it smells. It has a very distinct smell. Let me smell it. I don't know if I'm gonna say this. It smells like um, like wine fermentation to me. Oh, that's actually pretty good smelling. Yeah, I would, no, they smell good. It's I not throw, a bad smell. I throw some milk on that in a bowl in the morning. That's oh, well, I don't know about that. But um, it helps kind of keep their look youthful. So when they get big like that, sometimes they get kind of really flubbery. This is kind of helps keep them tight. Could I get some of that to go? I know, right? Me too. For me, the biggest change in developing curriculum is how do I take something that I physically handed to my students and put it digitally? I'm a paper person. I love having it there and going over with my students and trying to figure out how to make it work in Google Docs or something that, you know, taking a PDF that I would normally use and I get them to type in it has been mind blowing. Um, it, that's been my biggest struggle. My other ag teacher friends, I call them, like, how do you do it? Or luckily we have some really like techie people in our department and they're able to help me out with that. Other than that, it's just taking those hands-on group projects and trying to figure out how can you mimic that in a situation where they are not allowed to get together to work on it. Uh, weirdly, I actually spend more time with my animals now that I'm at home than I did before in school. Because in school, I would just go to the rabbit barn and feed them. But now, because I have them at home, when I get bored, sometimes I take the rabbits out of their cage or I go outside and pet my sheep. So last year, I was supposed to be able to uh, raise a meat rabbit for the Madera Fair. And I already had paid for my rabbit. I was just getting ready for the rabbit to be born and for them to give it to me so I can start raising it. But then the whole COVID situation popped up and Madera Fair said that they were gonna cancel their fair. So what ended up happening is I ended up getting my refund and I wasn't able to show this year. Attendance is up, but what I've noticed is the students that aren't here really are not here. I have students I haven't seen in eight weeks. I have students I haven't seen in five weeks. So the students that are not showing up are not showing up at all. It's not just a little bit here and there, and sometimes you would see that with, with in-person teaching, but with distance learning, they're just completely off the grid and, and I have no communication with them. I really miss the interaction, like one of my best or like my favorite parts is getting to know them and just looking at them and knowing like, hey, what is one of your goals for the year and helping them succeed and earn that goal. And that's one of the things that I worry about the most is that they're going to look back at this year and if they're seniors or juniors or even freshmen, any grade, they're going to look back and think like, what a wasted year. I didn't get to do anything that I wanted to do. hard for me to talk about Miss Luxon because of the fact that she's helped me so much. I think she's one of the first person that, I've, that ever saw potential in me. You know, standing here seeing that I was able to be a regional officer, a sectional officer, it's crazy to see because freshman me would have never thought I was capable of that. Ms. Lexon was not only a mentor, but she was also like a second parent to me due to the fact that she always wants to see others succeed, whether it's finding their personal growth 
or finding their passion, I know Luxon is always someone that I can count on and that will always believe in me even when I don't see the potential in myself. my second year. My two older brothers showed. I kind of learned about their pigs a little bit. I dive in and like, I didn't know how to walk a pig because like maybe my brother was gone at a party. My dad would tell me, pull out, pull out his pig and walk it. How'd you do? I got first. What? The breed champion. <laughs> and you were wanting to just get food, right? Yeah. How are you feeling right now? Good. What do you think, why do you think you got first? What, 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 was, what, what, what made it happen for you? Well, first, because I had nobody in my class, I guess. But also, I walked my pig and paid attention to the judge. Really good. Well, good job, buddy. You earned it. Thank you. Feel pretty good? Yeah. It would have been so much easier to throw in the towel. My kids exhibit, and so, you know, my son had a steer. And so, you know, when, when this all started in March, I mean, we looked at each other and tried to decide, well, do we keep him? Do we, you know, just sell him now and cut our losses? So, you know, we turned our steer out to pasture for a few months until we figured out what was really gonna happen and then, you know, brought him back in and got him ready for fair. But it's, it's the same thing. It's just been an emotional roller coaster. The whole process itself has been kind of difficult. Like there's definitely positives and that's what I try to remember every day is like, even if you're struggling, like something good is happening. Like I'm learning new technology. I'm getting to know kids through different ways. Um, you know, like there's always gonna be a golden light in whatever we're doing. So even though we're struggling as teachers, parents, students, we're learning new things every day and that's what we keep having to focus on. So this this is a new steer that you're going to have for next year. Yes. So Rip was my 2020 Fresno Fair calf, and he is my 2021 State Fair steer. And that's Sam. Yes, this is Samuel. Samuel. And what kind of a steer is Samuel? Samuel is purebred Shorthorn, so he'll show in a completely different division than Rip. Um, Rip goes in the Black Cross division. He's uh, not very fond of people yet. When, when will be the last time you see Rip? Um, so after the show and we sell him, um, usually probably two weeks here, coming up, yeah. Two weeks. It's gonna be a sad day though when it goes, when he goes it, off. It is a very sad day. And luckily I do have Sammy for next year so I can kind of switch my focus, but it is a sad day, definitely. It's part of the circle of life though. It is, yes. Um, it's part of what we do. Yeah. I, like I said, I did um, everything I could to take care of him while he was here. He was treated like a king. I think Leslie has continued to be a positive individual through this distance learning. She still shows up to class and enthusiastic to learn. She always has a positive attitude when she's there on camera during class. There's no doubt that, that there are probably some struggles, but she is one of those people that is adaptive and will be a better individual because of it. She's gonna become stronger because she was able to navigate through these challenges successfully. Even though I can't be in there, it, it's still as good as it could be. That class, I have learned more than any other class that I have ever been with. And I know that the stuff that I learned in her class, I'm gonna be able to implement it in my life every single day. 
Sorry, my mom's calling me. Sorry. <laughs> Hello? I'm in I'm at an interview. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag. Provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates. Insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years. By Garv Bennett, the growing experts in water, irrigation, nutrition, and crop care advice and products. We help growers feed the world. By Golden State Farm Credit, building relationships with rural America by providing ag financial services. By Brandt, professional agriculture proudly supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003. By Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food.